I'm here tonight to take a stand for a four-letter word, one that I have pushed away, denied, and doubted, and yet it has become the greatest gift and medicine of my life. I'm here tonight to take a stand for play. Now, out of all the things that are important in the world, why choose play? Because play, I have found, is the most effective and powerful tool to get groups and teams to connect and collaborate quickly, easily, and deeply. So as Brady said, in 2003, I co-founded a practice called Acro Yoga that builds community through the values of trust, connection, and playfulness. And after 10 years of building Acro Yoga into a global movement with hundreds of thousands of practitioners, I decided to sell my half the business to take play into companies. And that was really scary because as a culture, we don't value play. We think of it as something for kids, something that is frivolous, but actually play and work are not opposite. They're very much complementary. So there's a book that came out last year that actually says that play is the number one motivator for work, twice as powerful as purpose and almost three times as powerful as potential. So in contrast, a recent Gallup poll says that 70% of our workforce is disengaged. How many people are going to work every day doing things they don't care about for a paycheck just to survive at the end of the week. There's a gap here, and I think play has a part in solving it. So what do we mean when we talk about play? Play is something you do for the pure enjoyment of it, not for a goal or for an outcome. It involves taking risks, being creative, getting outside of your comfort zone, interacting with other people, and being present. Mindfulness is something that many companies have embraced as a tool for becoming centered, focused, and available to the present moment. And play is just being in an extended state of mindfulness, except you get to add fun and togetherness. So in a recent workshop I did with ESPN, we played this game, Yes, Let's. One person makes a suggestion, and everyone immediately in the whole group says, Yes, let's do whatever that thing is, and then they enact it. So in this particular instance, one person said, let's do the wave. And so everyone was like, yes, and they all passed the wave down. And then there was this awkward moment. And someone said, let's pass it back. And they passed it back. And then they said, let's do the conga line. Everyone said, yes, let's do the conga line. And then it was like, dun, 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 dun. And the crowd erupts with laughter. So improvisation might seem like this isolated thing over there that doesn't relate to real life, but you're making improvisational decisions every moment, and play is training for the unexpected. It helps you to make those decisions and stay calm under pressure. Play turns strangers into community. It breaks down barriers, it levels hierarchies, it unravels power dynamics, and it creates trust and connection in groups almost instantly. Play lights up the brain. It decrystallizes the patterns of the mind. It helps the left and right hemispheres talk to each other, so we create new neural pathways, literally making you smarter and expanding your range of being. Play makes failure fun. So it creates this low stakes environment where you can make a mistake and laugh at yourself instead of get mad at yourself or blame one of your team members. And it creates an atmosphere of innovation, creativity, and a willingness to take risks. It also invokes a sense of childlike, playful curiosity and wonder, where we see the world and its challenges with fresh eyes. We can think about how can something happen instead of what if it could happen. There are many great leaders who have endorsed the value of play, including Albert Einstein, who said that play is the highest form of research. And he was known to make many of his famous discoveries while playing his violin. So play takes many forms for me. Often it's hiking up in the Oakland Hills with my dog, Charlie, where I get my greatest insights and discoveries, or going to Burning Man like I did this year with my husband and wore my wedding dress for fun on our one year anniversary. So, for many of us, work and play feel separate. They feel opposed. But how can we start the knit them, to knit them closer together? How can you start to infuse your work with a sense of playfulness, a sense of enjoyment for doing it just for the pleasure that it gives you? So I dedicate my life to leading live groups through ex playful experiences because it's the thing that lights me up. It keeps me accountable to being playful and it makes me feel like I'm the best person that I can be. So George Bernard saw, Shaw said, we don't grow old, we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. 
So I invite you to stay young and keep playing. Thank you.